Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 39. We are in section 9.2, and this is part 4. So in the previous three videos, we reviewed section 9.1, which is how to test hypothesis for the population mean mu when we do know sigma, the population standard deviation. As I've mentioned before, this is not a very realistic case. So in real life, what we usually encounter is testing for the population mean when we do not know sigma. So what we have to use is, the, is S, the sample standard deviation. So that's what we will start in this video for section 9.2. I hope you enjoy the pre-recorded video. Welcome. In this video, we're going to cover section 9.2, which is testing the mean mu for a hypothesis test when we do not know sigma. When we do not know sigma. In this case, this is the real life situation. <clears throat> we rarely know the true population standard deviation or mean. So we have to use the sample standard deviation, S. As I mentioned in section uh, 8.2 in the last chapter when we dealt with uh, high po uh, confidence intervals, uh, and we didn't know the population standard deviation, we had to use S as our estimate. And whenever we use S, we use the T table. So S and T go together. So we're going to use the t-statistic and thus the t-table. So instead of writing all this out over again, I figure that it's easier for us to just do an example. In fact, I'm going to use the same examples from section 9.1, but I modified them. So let x be a random uh, variable representing the dividend yield of Australian bank stocks. We may assume x has a normal distribution. A random sample of 10 Australian bank stop stocks have a sample mean x bar equals 5.38%. And now I'm saying a sample standard deviation s is equal to 2.4%. For the entire Australian stock market, the mean dividend yield is about 4.7%. So do these data indicate that the dividend yield of all Australian banks is higher than 4.7%? Use alpha equals 0.01. So we're going to do the same thing. Our requirements check. Okay. So we have n is not equal to 30 or greater. So that's not good. But the data is normally distributed. So we're good for the requirements check. Remember, if we don't know the distribution, as long as we have n equals 30, we can still use the central limit theorem to get the answer and use these same formulas. Otherwise, to use these same formulas, we have to know that the original data was normally distributed. All right, <clears throat> so let's write our hypothesis statement. Well, it turns out that this is going to be the same as we had before. This is not going to change. So we go up here and we find our claim that the dividend yield of all Australian banks is higher than 4.7%. The reason I'm doing this and repeating this is I want to show you the difference. Okay, so we're going to get some different values for the um, p-value. And we may even have a different conclusion. So let's see what happens. All right. So <clears throat> this is, it was 4.7%. So h naught mu equals to, it's always going to be equal, 4.7% versus the alternative h1 mu is greater than 4.7%. So again, this part of it is going to be exactly the same. But our test statistic is different. Because we have S, see, on our formula sheet, we'll have Z observed equals square root of N, X bar minus mu 
over sigma, and we'll have t observed, square root of n, x bar minus mu over s. If we don't have sigma, we can't use this formula. We have s, so we're going to use this formula. Again, I'm always looking for you to write down the test statistic, the formula, and then plug in. So this is going to be the square root of n, which was uh, 10, I believe. x bar was 5.38. minus mu right here in our null hypothesis we see what mu is 4.7 divided by s which is 2.4 percent okay and so you see <clears throat> we actually get the exact same number in this case as we did before so Second square root 10, close that parenthesis, times, open the parenthesis, 5.38 minus 4.7, close that parenthesis, divided by 2.4. So I should probably make this a little neater. And the answer I get again is 0.895978, da, da, da. And it's a T table. So the T table, I can round to three decimal places. That's what's in my T table. So I go one, two, three. So I go to the fourth decimal place. It's a nine. Nine is, uh, remember, if it's five or higher, we round up the decimal place right beside it uh, to the left, which is a five. So that's going to go to a six. So 0.8. 96 is my test statistic value. Now, the rejection criteria is always p value is less than alpha. Okay, so we need to figure out our p value here, but this is going to be a lot more challenging because we're using the t test statistic, the standard, uh, so the t test, test statistic, and we've got a Let's see, this is a positive 0.896. And we want to know what this area over here is. Well, this is a little more difficult with the t-table. So let's look at our t-table. And these are critical values. And so the area that we see, the right-tailed area, will be the uh, uh, one-tail area. Okay. And so uh, for t, you'll notice t is positive here, and here it's negative, so um, this area and this area will be the same. But we're looking for the right tail, so uh, we don't have to worry about the left tail area. So we want to find, so now we need to go back, and we need to look at for the T statistic, we have to have the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom are n minus 1. And so we have n is equal to 10. So 10 minus 1 equals 9. So we need 9 degrees of freedom. And that tells us what row to look at. Oops. Oh, I'm already there, aren't I? I want to go here. There we go. So I want to come down to row nine degrees of freedom and I'm looking for 0.896 now I'm not going to find 0.896 but I can tell you it's between these two values here 1.23 and 0.703 I'm not worried about which it's closer to I'm just looking that it's between these two and so um, if I look at the one-tailed area, the area above 1.23, it's 0.125. And if it's uh, above 0.703, then it's 0.250. So the only thing I know is that this right-tailed area is between 0.125 
and 0.250. Okay, that's all I can tell. The best I can do with this. So my p-value, oops, my p-value is between 0.125 and 0.250. So is this less than 0.01, which is what our alpha is in this case? Remember, they gave us alpha. Use alpha equals 0.01. So, no, neither one of these numbers is less than this. This is not true. So, um, since the statement is not true, we do not reject H naught. Okay. So our decision is still going to be uh, fail oops, to reject, that's messy, I can't read it, and I wrote it, fail to reject H naught. How did we do last time? Oh, well, here's last time. My p-value here, um, let me change colors. My p-value, when I knew what sigma was, was 0.1841. Now, my p-value is somewhere between 0.125 and 0.250. I don't know exactly where it is, um, but 0.896 um, is that closer to what was our two numbers? 0.703 or 1.230, 896, it's closer to 0.703, which was, so it'd be closer to 0.25, okay, than it is to 0.125. So when we knew sigma, we got a 0.1841. When we don't know sigma, we probably got a number that's closer to 0.25, okay. But we get... But in any case, those numbers aren't anywhere close to our alpha, which is 0.01. So again, we still don't reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So again, everything else works about the same. We failed to reject the null. So there does not exist sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean dividend yield of all Australian bank stocks is higher than 4.7% at a 99% confidence level. Again, we're taking uh, confidence level, which is C, right? C is equal to 1 minus alpha, which is 1 minus 0 0.01, which is 0 0.99, which is 99%. Using a simple random sample of size 10, so we got the same results, but we have a pretty different uh, p-value. I'm going to say that it's closer to 0.250. So, uh, and let's see, so that is, so 0.25 minus 0.125 is 0.125. And <clears throat> half of that, so... So right in the middle between these would be 0.1875. Right in the middle of these two would be 0.1875. Okay? But this is actually closer to, so when we look at um, here, we had a, a 0.9 for our uh, Z and a 0.1841 for our p-value. And so our p-value, um, if it was right in the middle, would be 0.1875, which is a little higher than uh, 0.1841. But when we look at our table, 0.896 is uh, closer for nine degrees of freedom. For nine degrees of freedom, it's gonna be closer 
to this value, which means that the p-value is going to be closer to 0.25. So it's actually going to be higher than what we had before. All right. So in this case, the p-value is higher. All right. We don't know exactly what it is without using a computer. So it's, um, but, whoops. 0.1252.250, if I'm labeling my graph. All right. But it turns out that this was so, uh, uh, the mean was too close for us to reject in either case. Well, that's the end of this video. Please remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. If you have questions, please come to virtual office hours. I am very happy to help you, as always. If you can't do that, then you're welcome to email me. But when you email me, I need two things from you. The first is a picture of the problem so that I can help you through email. I may not have the problem available to me. If you don't send me the problem, then you're going to have to wait until I get back to my computer and get that problem pulled up. So please send me a picture of the problem. The second thing you need to send me is a picture of your work so far. This helps me understand how you're approaching the problem and may help me or will help me uh, help you faster and better. So I hope you will stay safe and take care of yourself. Until next time, we'll see you then.